Hello, my name is Jeff Keller. I work for Track and Trade and Gecko Software. Uh, today we're going to take a look at Track and Trade Live Futures. We're going to go through some of the different features, different sections of the program. If anyone here has any questions today in the class, go ahead and just write those in. If you have a section of the software you're curious about, you want to know more about, just type in that. We'll talk about it. Um, we are always up for uh, mixing things up, jumping in different directions. If you're interested in a specific indicator system, creating an autopilot program, basically anything that you like, we'll talk about. Uh, we're going to go through, talk about some of the different features, different options for the program. And again, if you have any questions along the way, just type those in. Um, be sure to write in, let me know if everyone can hear me okay. And let's go ahead and open up a chart. I'm going to come over here to the right side, and I'm going to go ahead and open up the E-mini S&P, just the June contract. Uh, this is going to be expiring here tomorrow. So we're actually uh, quite uh, wrapping down for this specific symbol. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop down my time frame for right now. I'm thinking something smaller like maybe uh, 5 minute, 15, or possibly even a range chart. Really like range charting. Uh, it's definitely an interesting feature, different section to go through. And if you haven't tried range charting yet, I would give it a shot, actually. Uh, because range charting is completely based off of price movement. Um, it does not care at all um, about time. All right? um, price bars will only be generated if the market moves uh, your specific number of ticks that you set for your range. Uh, so you're going to be seeing very smooth uh, markets, especially if it's trending well. And uh, you attach some jump trail stops, uh, put in some good indicators, and you will get some fantastic results. Um, some of the best autopilot systems we're running right now, uh, we're always running them here at Gecko, um, are trading range charts. I can tell you that right now. Um, so I definitely recommend uh, giving that a try. Take a look, see what you get, and uh, go from there. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the different features in the program. I think we might talk a little bit of technical analysis, drawing tools today, uh, go over some of the different features, options uh, that you have, um, and go from there. All right, here we have the 15-minute E-mini S&P, the June contract. Let's take a look at some of the options for technical analysis, Some uh, a little bit of theory. I don't normally do that very much. I normally more nuts and bolts of technical analysis um, and using technical indicators to do the work for me. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the different features of the program. Um, particularly when you're going through and drawing out some of your own analysis. And I think you'll like that just fine. All right, so first things first, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the different features you can use to go through and quickly just draw in some chart analysis. Um, I am going to adjust my appearance a little bit. I want to have everyone see really well here in the class. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of my price bars, drag things down. You can always customize and move things pretty quickly. And let's talk about some of the different features and uh, strategies. Uh, that are out there. All right, first of all, let's see. Looking at this chart, I'm sure everyone can immediately spot some patterns, and I actually see some as well right away. Um, let's go ahead and talk about some of those. Uh, one important thing to note, I'm going to be going through and moving my chart, bar, uh, chart book forward and backwards in time. Um, so, um, like right here, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and show you um, an option for adjusting and uh, taking a look at some of the different features here. Let's see. You can go through and move the charts back and forth. Not in this one. You can in the end of day. Um, all right. This is about as classic of an example of a um, bullish flag that you can get. Um, I know that uh, on the bearish flag, it's uh, also called the pregnant lady. If you're a candlestick uh, worker, I can't remember the name right now for the uh, candlestick formation for the uh, bullish flag. Um, but specifically, you have one long price bar. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger again. I want to look at this guy right here. All right, what I'm going to do, if I were looking at this as the market were going along, this is definitely a classic flag formation. Now, there's a couple different ways you can go through and chart out and look at these. Now, if it were me, I would probably uh, use the trend channel. Uh, trend channel right here, you can select the tool, and you can go through and draw out the channel right in the screen. And what I would specifically be looking for if I were checking this is a break above or below the channel. All right, or the flag. This is definitely a flag because it's coming after this. Um, this guy right here would be actually a great example of a channel, like a horizontal channel. Take a look at these price bars right here, going sideways for simple price bars. 
you may even cut out some of those previous ones, and then you would look for the break above or below. In this case, it breaks below, but it doesn't last very long. So it's actually not um, a long-term signal right here, but this is actually a great example of a narrow sideways channel um, where you specifically will put in a buy or sell above or below that channel, and then once it breaks out, you take that position. But in this case, it actually did a retracement that came back up. This guy, however, this is just a classic flag. Um, if you were wanting to trade something like this, you have all these price bars that are coming down, and what you would do is you would want to place in a trade above or below that channel. Uh, so to show you what I'm going to do, I'm going to place in a crosshair. And this crosshair I'm just going to use as an example of where I'd place the orders. Um, so here I've got um, a horizontal line. I've got the price shown right on it. It's a nice thing about turning off the vertical uh, line on the uh, crosshair tool. What I can do is just use these crosshair lines as support and resistance. Okay? So specifically for this, you might even move it up just a little bit more, you would put in your trades to go either long right here or short right here. And you could even go through and color coordinate that. I would actually recommend doing that. I would say that um, this is going to be my long order if it breaks above. This is going to be my short order if it breaks below. All right, And then, obviously, we wait to break out of that channel or break out of that flag. If we move the chart forward, uh, let's say uh, one price bar, doo -doo. Okay. right here, what we're going to see is that price bar, it breaks above and up and out of that channel, and then at that point, we would be in the market to go long at that price, and then we could even use this stop right down here as your stop loss. Okay, um, You'd have it just below the support of that previous mark. You could even put it further down. You could say that you would put your um, you could say that you could put your stop loss down here below the last point of uh, support. Um, you could actually set it down here at this price right here or you could leave it a little bit closer. Right here you don't have a lot of breathing room so it's very possible that you could drop down, trigger, hit and then get back in. Um, but this is actually really a classic flag formation. It breaks above. You're now into the market to go long. And once you're there, it's just a matter of time before things start going your way. Right-click, play forward, and you know you take your long position and go from there. Uh, a couple other things uh, that you can look for when you're going through and just doing your own technical analysis. Um, this guy right here could actually be a small little one, two, three. Uh, let me show you what I mean once we're drawing in. Uh, one, two, three, or ABC projections, very popular to use. Um, they're actually basically an offshoot of Elliott Wave, um, even possibly a little Fibonacci theory. Let me go ahead and draw one out for you and give you an idea of what I'm referring to. Uh, the one, two, three is going to be up here at the top. One, two, three, just a little button right here. You left-click on this, and then you draw out a wave. All right? You have your beginning of the wave. You have the top. You have your retracement. Okay, your one, two, three. All right. Once you've got that out into the chart, it's going to label those one, two, three. It's also referred to as the ABC at times as well. And then if you have your preferences tab open over on the right side, you're going to see a lot of options here for going through and uh, drawing out some projections or predictions. Uh, you can actually go through and show Fibonacci percentages from your one to two, which is nice to have. Uh, you can also, let me go ahead and make that a little bit bigger for you, you could also show um, Fibonacci from the 2 to 3. Um, actually, but though, um, what I would do with the 1, 2, 3, if you're doing the 2 to 3 percentage, I would use the retracement of the 1 to 2. It makes a lot more sense. Okay? This is specifically going to show you how much the third, or this section down here, has retraced from the 1 to 2 move. All right, so you can actually take a look really quick and see that you know, from 1 to 2, we drop down on the retracement to 3, and that 3 is exactly looks like 39% of a retracement of the 1 to 2 move. So normally, if I'm using the 1 to 3, I'll just keep that checked, because that's what I really want to see. I want to see how far it's retraced uh, from the previous wave. And if it breaks below 50%, then it's not just a retracement. Normally, that means it's a change of direction. You're not having an official wave. Um, it's not always the case, but normally, uh, the, the full 50, uh, if you break through the 50%, it's no longer a real 1, 2, 3. Usually, you want it to be 50% or less of a retracement for it to be a legitimate one. Um, if you are back here, the market's moving along, you've drawn out your one, two, three, and you're basically at this point looking for another move up, um, what we do is turn on the three, four, 
or the CD. Now we have one, two, three on the chart. There is no four D. We're actually going to tell.